Holy Cinema Batman! It's a review for the 1966 Batman movie! Sorry, I had to try that out. <laughs> I'm Rob and welcome to R&B Reviews and lately I've been reviewing a lot of uh, Batman movies thanks to the release of Christopher Nolan's uh, Dark Knight Rises. Not too long ago I went ahead and I reviewed the first two ba ever Batman movies, the 1943 Batman and of course the 1949 Batman and Robin. And now I'm going to be moving forward to the classic 1966 Batman movie. And, um, of course, it's based off of the popular TV show that starred Adam West as Batman and Burt Ward as Robin. And, um, before I get into my review for, uh, the movie, I'm going to take a couple minutes to try and defend the TV show because a lot of, uh, Batman fans today don't like the 1966 Batman because it's either it's because it's too dark, it's too over the top, or some stuff like that, but... Um, honestly, I, at the time, really, Batman wasn't really too dark. I actually got a collection of comic books, um, from 1964, uh, The Silver Age, and these, this is all the light stuff. I mean, Batman wasn't always dark. If you look at these comic books, he, you could tell that this inspired the TV show. There's the On the Present Narrator, there's a few ridiculous plots. I mean, Batman at this time was pretty light, and... It's, it even says on the back here the stories that inspired the Batman TV series. So for those of you that don't, that believe that Batman, they're, they're, people are saying like this Batman's making fun of the character and it's not dark and it's too light and all this other stuff. I recommend checking out this showcase book, uh, Batman, and um, you'll see it for yourself. And plus, the Batman, even in the first season of the TV show, the show was kind of serious if you watch the first season. Um, there, are some of the, there were some film noir-ish sort of shadows that were used in some of the episodes. I don't think the series was a complete spoof, as people say it was, but I do believe that over time when um, people said that the show was campy and all this stuff, I think producers believed it, and I think from like the middle of the second season on, they started to go more into the campy, crazy, 60-ish sort of vibe, and I think that's what killed the series off personally. But I mean, what I liked, uh, this was the Batman that taught, that introduced me to the characters, you know, the villains and the Batman character, and, you know, that's that's where I learned it from, from the show from. So this Batman always has a place in my heart, really. So, I mean, the 1966 Batman, yes, it's light, and he's not, you know, the, the dark character that we have now, but I think it, for what it is, I think it's a fun show. There's some very good writing in some of the episodes. I think the villains in this one were played wonderfully, and I'll get into that with the movie. So, overall... Commodore Schmidlap's invention in our hands, the whole world almost literally in our grasp, Batman and Robin still alive to block us. <laughs> Everything pip pip with a prisoner, comrades. He hasn't a clue. No, but I bet the dynamic duo has. What? A clue on how we made that ship disappear. And when they solve that, of course, they'll be out to investigate. But we'll be there first. Okay, now moving on to the 1966 movie. It came out between the first and second season of the show. And, of course, as I mentioned, it's got a, it's a very, I think it's a very, very fun movie, and you can definitely tell that you're in a comic book sort of world. It's definitely, it's a colorful film, it's fast-paced, and, you know, the, the new Batman movies with Christopher Nolan, as well as the one from Tim Burton, they, they're usually a little bit more slower paced, and it allows for more character development, but here, um, you really don't need the character development, because you already have a general idea of who the characters are. You know, um, even on the TV show, nobody had an origin story. It, when the first episode aired, you automatically assumed that Batman had been fighting these villains for quite some time. And here, there's no need for the character development, which is a plus to this movie. And in this movie, Batman is loved by many characters. I mean, in a lot of the newer Batman movies, he's viewed more as a vigilante, and some people don't like him, they despise him. But here, everybody in Gotham City, including Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara, they love Batman. And um, the, the, basically the plot with this movie is, again, the, 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 I had a problem with the script, but we'll get to that later. The storyline is pretty much uh, Joker, Penguin, Riddler, and Catwoman decided to join forces and kidnap the um, sort of delegates from the UN and, in order to get a big ransom. And they have a very clever way of doing it. They steal an invention which allows them to do that. And if you haven't seen the movie, I won't give it away how. And um, 
What's interesting, of course, is the performances. Batman is usually more monotone, and the villains are a little bit more energetic. You know, if they, they're a fun, really fun, great cast, and uh, they really, I always felt more interested in the villains of the show anyway, rather than Batman and Robin. They were always more colorful, more interesting to watch, and they were played by a great cast. You had Frank Gorshin as the Riddler. The, if you watch him, the way the, his facial expressions and the way he moves his body sometimes, it's just perfect for the character. And Burgess Meredith as the Penguin, perfectly cast. He knows how to put in characteristics for the character, which is why he's one of the most respected actors of all time. And of course, if you've seen him in Rocky movies and the Twilight Zone, you'll, you can back me up on that. Um, Cesar Romero played the Joker, and again, people criticize him because he's not darkly comical like Jack Nicholson or Heath Ledger or Mark Hamill in Batman the Animated Series, but he is a clever, tricky trickster, and he's really he play, Cesar Romero, again, perfect at it. Sometimes, of course, he can be a little bit over the top, but come on, a lot of the other Jokers were over the top, too. They were great. Um, in this movie, Catwoman's played by Lee Merriweather instead of Julie Newmar from the TV show. I think Julie Newmar was a little bit better. She was a little bit more calm and a little bit more seductive, and Lee Merriweather wasn't quite that. I mean, I really didn't feel that any chemistry between Adam West and her uh, character. And sometimes when she's forced to get angry at the other, other villains for screwing up, it kind of sounds forced. You and know, you to... bundled it again. Again, the dynamic duo escapes. Time is getting short. We've got to get Batman before he gets us. Mm, perhaps I could lure him into the fatal embrace of a giant exploding octopus. You silly bird. They've just been through one of your fishy explosions, and they're still in one piece. Indeed. And I suppose they'll be broken up by your moldy joke. Go on. Shut up, all of you. I see the way to do it. We'll play each of our treacherous trumps in one hand, and we'll do it right. Um, as I mentioned, the story to me was just not quite as good as some of the scripts from the first season of the TV show. I mean, it does feature a lot of cliched stuff now, like villains wanting to take over the world. If you watch a lot of uh, TV shows and movies from this time period, the villains want to take over the world, and this is no exception. But still, it was great to see all four major villains together. A uh, disadvantage is if in the TV show, you know, all the clues, schemes, and plots managed to fit the character very well, but because you're sharing it with four villains, you know, you didn't really get that opportunity too much. And, um, but overall, I think they all work very well together. They do have their own egos, and they try to up each other from time to time, and sometimes they do stuff to get on each other's nerves. And, what, and it works very well. A lot of other superhero movies like the Batman and Spider-Man movies where they have multiple villains, sometimes it's hard to give them equal time, but here they pretty much have equal time. A problem is, you know, if there was an origin story, you know, and, and all that, you'd have to fight it out between the two of them, which is why stuff like Batman Returns and Spider-Man 3 didn't really work for me too much because you're trying to give all these equal time to the villains to develop them, and it's hard to do that. Um, of course, Batman is given some, some expository dialogue for Batman and Robin, and in a way, this after watching these movie serials, I could definitely see an influence of them in these Batman movies. The whole time, um, the villains are trying to come up with all these different kinds of plots after the previous one fails in order to get Batman. And, the wep and one of the weapons that's used in this movie to try and kidnap the... Um, Delicates, it, 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 it does seem a little bit too far-fetched and ridiculous, which I'm, I think that's where a lot of people are coming from when they criticize Batman from the 60s. But what's good is Batman really does care about human lives, and he does have some speeches about that in this movie. I mean, I'm not saying the other Batmans do that, but because those Batmans are a little bit darker, it's hard to tell sometimes. Overall, I thought this movie was a fun watch. I mean, there are some great classic funny bits in here, like, of course, Batman's fight with a shark. And, of course, the famous line where Batman's running around the dock with a giant bomb in his hand. Someday she just can't get rid of a bomb. But Overall, Batman, it's a, I, it's a, I enjoyed it. It's a, I thought it was a loads of fun, and it's nice and light. It's not as good as, let's say, the first half of the TV show, personally, uh, but it, since it's the only thing that's legally available on DVD at this time, that's probably what you're going to have to go with unless you can catch episodes of the show on your ca local cable stations. Um, so overall, 
I, I, for what it is, it, I think Batman's fun. And when I was a kid, I did take it a little bit more seriously. But as an adult, I can see it can be a little bit more comical.